Hi, so today the equipment under test is uh, a simple uh, PCB fan, sorry, like a PC fan that you might uh, have in any of your devices, typically in a PC or something like that. Um, normally su supplied by 12 volts. Uh, in this test, I've got it wired up here to a uh, bench power supply, which I've set to preview is set to 12 volts and what I'm doing I'm trying to play with the tachometer so with a standard fan these come in a variety of different versions that you may have seen so you may have seen this before in your PC and not really kind of figured out what it was for why it had a two wire version or a three wire version the two wire version is really straightforward it just drives the fan uh, it's positive and negative, so that's the black and the red. The three wire version, which you can see here, the third wire, the yellow wire here, is what's called the tachometer. And that gives a feedback from a hall sensor in the fan, which detects when the fan is at a certain point in the rotation. And it actually normally, for most of these fans, it will actually fire two pulses. So what we've got here, we've got the oscilloscope set up to uh, detect the pulses coming in from the Hall probe. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and when I turn the fan on, so I'll put on the power supply, I'll go 12 volts. Fan spinning, as you can see. Then down here, you can see the output from the tachometer here on the top trace, which is the yellow trace. Um, and if I, if I hold the, if I touch, oh, ouch, touch the fan to sort of slow it down, you can see that the trace stretches out. So that's showing you like how fast it's going. Um, and also if I, I don't know, if I put it somewhere where the fan can't really draw air so much that it slows down a little bit and stuff like that, which is what you'd expect. And if I drop the voltage here, uh, drop it down to like nine volts, and down to seven volts. And you can see that stretching out as the fan slows down. And now you're down at five volts, which is really the absolute lower limit of what the fan can do. Let's put it back up at 12, which is the sort of nominal voltage that you'd expect to be running at. And the observant amongst you will have noticed in the background we've got an Arduino here uh, with an LED. And what's going on is the TACO, as well as going into the oscilloscope probe, is going into pin two of an Arduino Uno. Uh, and pin four is just going through a resistor lighting up this LED. And I think you can probably guess what I'm doing here. So you'll see a slight uh, flickering that isn't quite realistic. That's to do with the, the video camera, uh, adding a slight effect on that, but we won't worry about that too much. So if we want to look at the code here now, this is Swift for Arduino. Um, really kind of simple code we've got going on here. Uh, the usual prelude, then we're saying taco pin is pin two. So the taco is going into pin two there, uh, which I'm marking as an input pin. So pin two, I'm using logical names here. So I always try and do this, just makes it easier to write the code. So I'm saying let taco pin equals two, uh, set pin two to be input and then write it up to high. And because we've written the value to high and yet it's an input pin, that'll actually do something quite nice, which is an input pull up. So it'll actually, if you look on the oscilloscope trace, you can see that's rated at five volts per division vertically. So that's actually setting the, the, the pin up to five voltage. It's pulling it up to five volts and then the taco is shorting it out down to zero. And you can read that incoming pulse. And then the LED pin, we're setting that as an output pin. And for now we're setting it low just to leave that for now as just stated. 
And here's where the magic is. And this is, you might have guessed what I'm gonna do here. So I've got my old friend set up pin to interrupt callback on rising edge. So this now means that this function here, this callback, gets executed every time there's a rising edge. Every time on here on the oscilloscope you see the rising edge, the, the edge going up there at the front of the waveform, this function will be executed. And what it's doing, really, very straightforward, it's, in essence, it's turning on the LED, waiting 200 microseconds, and then turning it off again. And then I've added in some extra little bits here. But this is the net effect of it, and hopefully you'll be able to see this. If I hold the LED up, so is it lights up so that it illuminates the fan, you can see that it looks like the fan stationary, and you can read the logo on the fan really clearly. But this fan is moving. If we hold it up to a genuine light, and you can see that it's moving. So effectively, the LED is just stroboscopically tied to the exact fan rotation. And now we can get into some of the other details of the code that we put in here. The first one is this first pulse variable. So I said that's false to begin with. And then you can see in the callback, I'm flipping it. False to true, true to false with that first line there. Then I'm saying if it's true, then we do, then we flash the LED. Why would we do that? If I turn it off, if I comment this out, let's say if I set that to true, yeah, so otherwise the code will never fire, and I upload this, it's loading on the Arduino, and now if you have a look at the logo now, you can see that it's kind of blurred, and it, it's very difficult to see on the camera, but what you've actually got is the logo right way up and upside down simultaneously. And this is because the taco pin fires twice per rotation, once kind of at the top of the rotation and once at the bottom of the rotation. So the point of doing this line here is to basically just take out one of those firings. And now we can go back to the oscilloscope. You can see actually on the oscilloscope, this is the bottom blue line, which I hadn't mentioned before, is the pulse that's going out on the LED. So you can see that it's coming up every time there's a rising edge, we've got the pulse coming up. There's actually a little bit of a delay in there, which I've kind of skipped over. Actually, if I put the delay to zero for now, then you can, you'll get a cleaner, <coughs> excuse me, a cleaner pulse on that. So you can see there it's going up on the rising edge. If I re-enable this flipping bit, and upload that, Then we've gone back to a really clear view of the logo, like that, because we're only flashing it once per rotation. <coughs> and the same for all the, the fan blades. You can see it looks like the fan blades are stationary, which of course they're not really. And what's this extra thing we've got in here? I'm calling that delay angle. So what I'm doing is just waiting a little bit of time before I fire it. If I set that to 1000, 1,000 microseconds, and upload that. Then you see it's moved the logo, the logo's now upside down. And this is, the next step on this project will be that I'm gonna have this value here adjusted by something like <coughs> a rotary encoder or something like that. And then you'll be able to rotate the exact position of it. And from there, I'm probably gonna work up to like turning into a clock or something like that. But uh, that is today's little bit of fun with Swift for Arduino. Download our app from www.swiftforarduino.com and get writing microcontroller code today, the easy way. <laughs>